Good morning. I'm Warren Kurtzman. I'm the president at Coleman Insights. In a couple of minutes, Sam Milkman and John uh, Boyne will be joining me. So we thought it would be great if we could take a real objective view of the state of contemporary music taste across the United States and Canada. And that's what we're going to show you today with the results of our contemporary music super study. Um, another thing that I want to just kind of share with you is how we did this study. Um, we provide a service to a lot of different radio stations called FAC 360 Strategic Music Tests. These are library music tests that guide the music strategies of a lot of radio stations. And when we do these FAC 360 studies for stations, they're often very focused. They're focused on a often very narrow age range, maybe 10, 15, sometimes maybe 20 years. They're often focused on one gender over the other or one specific ethnic group. They're also focused on the listeners of that particular radio station, with usually, usually a large proportion of them being P1s to listeners of that station. And of course, they're focused on just the market that the station competes in. So we thought, let's do something much bigger, let's do something much broader, and get this sense of where are contemporary music tastes in the US and Canada today. So what we did is we went into the field across both countries and fielded a 1,000-person study of 12 to 54-year-olds and got them to participate in a music test. Now, we put controls in place to make sure that the sample was representative of the population of both countries in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, and geography. And we really took this much broader look at the taste of the audience than we ever would in an individual music test. Now, the other thing we did that you know, is different from what we would normally do in a music test is most music tests are very focused on just the format of songs that would be relevant to a station's strategy. Well, here we took a much broader look. Uh, thanks to some help from our friends at Nielsen BDS and D uh, BDS Radio, and uh, I know Scott Musgrave and Haley Jones are here, and we really thank them for their help with this. Yes, Haley, give yourself a round of applause. Um, we wanted to make sure that this test really reflected what consumers are consuming today. So with their data, what we were able to do is build a list of the most consumed songs in 2018. Now, what do we mean by most consumed? These are the songs that listeners are most exposed to through air radio airplay. They're also the songs that they were most likely to stream and there are also the songs that they were most likely to purchase. So this is a very broad look at what music was being consumed the most in 2018. Now we also supplemented our list a little bit further in that we wanted to make sure that we tested songs from six major genres of music that all um, are heavily consumed um, in terms of new music. So what we did was we took that big list of all the most consumed songs and then we also made sure that the 25 most consumed songs from each of these six specific genres were covered in our test list as well. Then we just did one little editorial thing, and that is that we eliminated any songs from this list that were more than five years old. And actually, when you look at the most consumed songs in 2018, there was only one song that was more than uh, five years old. And you probably won't be surprised to hear that it was Bohemian Rhapsody, which makes sense in 2018. So with all due respect to the late, great Freddie Mercury, or maybe more precisely, Remy Malik as Freddie Mercury, uh, we eliminated that song from the list. But otherwise, this is a very broad list of the most consumed songs in 2018, covering a wide array of genres. And just a, a note about this, notice that we're not calling this study our new music super study. This is not a study of currents or new releases. It's a study of all of the contemporary songs that were the most heavily consumed in 2018, hence the name Contemporary Music Super Study. Most of the list is songs from 2018, but there are some songs going all the way back to 2014 that were still among the most consumed songs in the United States and Canada last year. Now, when we did this study, much like we do when we do a traditional music test, the first thing we ask our respondents is to tell us whether they're familiar with the song or not. And then if they are familiar with the song, we ask them to rate those songs on a scale of one to five, with five being a song that listeners like a lot, one being songs that they dislike a lot, and of course, any score in between. And when John and Sam are going to take you through the data in a couple of minutes, we're going to look at these scores in a couple of different ways. The most simplistic way we're going to look at it is very simply what we call a like a lot score. It's just the percentage of all 1,000 people in our study 
who rated a song with a like a lot evaluation. But then to get a little bit more objective, we're gonna look at the full range of scores. Because if you're programming a radio station, you're not only thinking about the songs that listeners are passionate about, you also wanna be careful with the songs that may be polarizing and that they may dislike to some extent. So the other way we're gonna look at a lot of data today is through something we're gonna call an evaluation average, which is just simply a song's performance across the full range of scores. So Warren told you about how the test list was put together. Uh, let's take a look at how that test list composition looks. Now, you already know it's music from the past five years, predominantly material from the more recent couple of years. But what does it look like by genre or style of music? Well, we coded every song tested to reflect uh, the categorizations from Nielsen uh, uh, Music and BDS Radio and the six major uh, codes you see there on the screen. The biggest genre within the test list is hip hop and R&B, accounting for a third of the titles tested, uh, which obviously is indicative of high consumption of hip hop and R&B last year. Then you get to a second tier, uh, which includes country and pop, each at roughly 20% of the test list. Now when you dig into some of these genres, it's interesting to see where they came from. Hip hop and R&B, a lot of those titles came from digital consumption. Country, on the other hand, a lot of those titles came from radio airplay consumption. Um, then the third tier of genres uh, that were among the most consumed titles, dance, alter electronic, alternative rock, and Latin, each accounting for roughly 10% of the test list. So that's the baseline. That's what we'll use in a lot of the following charts to kind of show you, uh, uh, here's what we're comparing it to. So how does this compare to the best testing tier of music? And we'll, we'll be looking at top 100 lists. We're gonna start with the top 100 list that's ranked based on that like a lot score that Warren described earlier. Think of this as passion. This doesn't consider how everyone else feels, it just considers the passion level, the like a lot score for a song. And when we look at the best testing songs by that metric, you see two categories really rise above the others. 35% of the best testing like a lot songs are hip hop and R&B, and 33% are pop. For hip hop and R&B, that represents a slight overperformance of their share of the test list. For pop, it represents a big overperformance. 19% of the test list is pop, but 33% of the top 100 like a lot songs are pop. So they're really rising to the top. Pop is popular. And when we go through subsequent data, what you'll see is the difference maker for pop is there's certainly a core appetite, but then everyone else kind of likes it too. Whether you're a hip hop fan or a country fan or an alternative fan, you like some pop. And so that broad mass appeal helps really lift pop up overall. Conversely, you'll see Latin only has one title in the top 100 because it's kind of the opposite of pop. It has a core fan base, but doesn't really get into the fan bases of other genres, as you might guess. Now, the second way of looking at data is the evaluation score, which is really what we're going to predominantly focus on today. That, again, is the average score across all people in the study. This takes into account those who really love a song, those who are so-so on a song, those who dislike a song. And if you think about it in terms of radio airplay, it's oftentimes important to know kind of what drives positives and also what's negative. When we look at the top songs on an evaluation average basis, you're going to see pop rises up even further. Clearly the dominant category of the best testing contemporary songs. Secondarily is hip hop and R&B. And notice the difference of hip hop and R&B, whether we look at it in the first metric or the second metric. It's really interesting and it makes a lot of sense and it helps explain a lot of things that you see. Um, hip hop and R&B has a lot of fans. A lot of these titles have really great like a lot scores. But the flip side of that is it's a polarizing genre. It's more likely to also have people who are on the other end of the spectrum. They're not lukewarm on the songs, they just overtly dislike it. And so, um, if you think about on-demand consumption, uh, uh, streaming, purchases, that's only about what you like. And it, but if you're thinking about it from a radio airplay perspective, it is important to understand kind of what the whole target audience likes. And so that's why you sometimes will see maybe a song could be really high 
in digital consumption, but actually not work for your radio station. And it's because of this relationship. Now, um, we're going to come back around. We'll look at some top rankers of songs. But I want to go dive in deep into the six genres that we've primarily assessed here. Uh, we, we were able to look at um, how people evaluated different genres of music, and we can look at the fan bases of each. So we're going to go in and kind of go one by one and see what those fans like. And we're going to start with hip-hop and R&B. So the baseline, again, in green is the genre distribution of what was tested. And next to it, let's take a look at the top 100 titles with hip-hop and R&B. Not surprisingly, you get a lot of hip-hop and R&B. 63% of the top 100 titles with these fans are, are of that genre. So that's roughly a two to one overperformance, which is a pattern you're gonna see play out with the other genres. Now what's interesting is then to go see well, what's next. And you see how pop really overperforms with the hip hop and R&B fans. What's that, what that is telling us is that pop music in general is quite compatible with the hip hop R&B audience, kind of a good second choice among this group. Whereas country has just as many songs tested in this study, but only one in the top 100 of hip hop and R&B fans. And some of you might be able to guess what that is. It's the crossover title, Meant to Be, with B.B. Rexa and Florida Georgia Line, kind of spans a lot of different genres. Sticking with hip hop and R&B, let me start to show you some rankers. Uh, what's the best testing music from this genre? If we just isolate the hip hop and R&B coded titles, what are the top songs overall among all thousand people? Number one, Pray For Me. Number two, Love Lies. Then you got 1-800-273-8255, Redbone, and Better Now. That's the top five overall, all thousand people. And you can see it's Probably not a lot of surprises. This is a mass appeal music study. Remember, 12 to 54 year olds, two countries, and these are pretty big crossover songs. Now, it's also interesting to say, well, let's look at the fans of the format. Does it look any different? So if we focus in on hip hop and R&B fans, this is their top five. There's some similarities, there's some differences. God's Plan comes in, Humble by Kendrick Lamar comes in, Rockstar by Post Malone comes in. There's a little, I'd say, more purity on the right. Next, let's go to country. And uh, if we're focusing on country fans, their top 100 songs include 55 country songs, which is, is kind of the best ratio we're going to see of all the genres. All, more than two and a half to one, their share of the test list, which is telling us there's a real uh, a focus of country fans. They really love country. There's a lot of depth there. They are less likely to spill over into other genres. Secondarily, pop. A common theme across all these genres. You're going to see pop does well with, with fans of all, all of these different styles. And then the other side of the spectrum, hip-hop and R&B. It counts for a big chunk of the test list, but not many of the top songs with country. What are the best testing songs from the country genre overall? Well, number one is Meant to Be, as I described earlier, huge crossover title. Then you've got Tennessee Whiskey, Small Town Bully, Body Like a Back Road, and Heaven. Now, if we focus on country fans, does it look different? It looks a little different. The number one song there is Small Town Boy. And you'll notice that the number one song overall, among all thousand people, the number one country song, I should say, Meant to Be, doesn't make the top five among country format fans, but it's not too far down. It's ranked number nine. More interesting is Tennessee Whiskey. Number two evaluated country song overall, but number 53 with country fans. So what's that telling us? Well, it tells us it gets a country label. Maybe it's not quite country. And its fans are coming from other different places. Little, little AAA, little alternative, different corners of the universe. Next, let's go to pop. Again, more than a two-to-one overperformance of the pop category among pop fans. A lot of titles there, as you would expect. And then, and then it's a little bit of everything else, because pop's right in the middle. It's got hip-hop fans, it's got country fans, it's got alternative fans, it's got dance fans. So you've got a little bit of all of that secondarily with pop. What are the top pop-coded titles in the study? Number one, Uptown Funk. Late 2014 titles, they're not brand new, but the top pop-coded song in this study, followed by Shape of You, 
thinking out loud. There's nothing holding me back, and scars to your beautiful. How about if we focus in on pop fans? Pretty much get the same list. A lot, of, a lot of cohesion there. Let's go to the three smaller categories. If we focus in on dance and electronic fans, it's a smaller category, so you don't get as many songs, but it's that roughly two to one overperformance that, that we've seen for the other three categories. And then a ton of pop. So, you know, dance, electronic, they really interplay with, with the pop world, and so they, there's a lot of pop that comes through there. If we focus in on the best testing dance electronic coded titles, uh, the middle is the number one song. And if we focus in on fans of this genre, a lot of the same titles come through, as you can see here, just comparing the top five of the two groups. Alternative rock counts for 9% of the test list. If we focus in on the fans of alternative rock, uh, you can see that 20% of their top titles are from that genre. Again, that roughly two to one overperformance is normal. Uh, but it's a smaller category in terms of the most consumed songs last year. How would it have looked 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Don't know, probably bigger. Uh, but, but among fans of alternative rock, you see a lot of pop appeal here. Um, uh, the alternative genre at this point is very intertwined with pop, um, not an island unto itself. And that's really evident when you look at the best testing titles that are coded in this way. They're really crossover titles. Believer by Imagine Dragons, Africa by Weezer, Shut Up and Dance, Feel It Still, and High Hopes. Okay, but what if we look at the fans of the format? Does it get kind of purer? Not really. Many of the same titles. In fact, two of these top titles with fans of the format are covers, Africa and Zombie. Finally, let's take a look at Latin. If you're looking at fans of the format, you get that roughly two to one overperformance of the category, and then a lot of pop. You just see it over and over and over. Pop works with, with all these different groups. And if we look here at the, real quickly, the top titles uh, uh, among Latin fan, uh, Latin overall and Latin fans, Mi Gente, the number one song of the Latin genre. We also looked at the results by demographic, men versus women, younger versus older participants, and then geographically, how did the data look different? And, and there's some interesting findings here, mainly relate to the differences in the amount of country titles in the top 100, and hip hop and R&B in the top 100. Let's start by looking at men versus women, and what I'm showing you here is the distribution John's been sharing along the way, but among men, you see of course pop, but also, a lot of hip hop R&B, about 23% in the top 100 about among male participants in our study, and very little country within their top 100. One other point while I look at the men, we do not see a lot of alternative or rock, um, which we may have seen if we had been doing the study a no number of years ago, but we do not see that rising in the top 100 um, as we do this study today. Women. Again, pop is the common thread, of course, um, but there's a higher percentage of country within the top 100 among women, 22% you see there, um, and just a little bit less hip hop and R&B among female participants in our study. When we look older and younger, we broke the data 12 to 34 and 35 to 54. Among the younger participants in our study, again, pop is the common thread, but we see a very high percentage of hip hop and R&B within their top 100 and very little country, 1%, one song, made it to the top 100 among 12 to 34 year olds. Whereas among the older participants, 35 to 54, here we see a large percentage in the top 100 of country songs and very little, only 7% hip hop and R&B. Now, as the participants came into our study, we asked them to tell us what kind of area they lived in. <clears throat> Do you live in a place that's urban, suburban, or rural? And here again, we're going to see differences in, in the texture of the top 100 among these various groups. For starters, the urban participants in our study have a high percentage of hip hop and R&B in their top 100 and very little country. Second, the suburbanites in our study have a little bit more country 
and some, somewhat less uh, hip hop and R&B than the urban participants. And when it really gets interesting is when we look at the rural people uh, in, in this test, 36% of their top 100 is country music and very little, 9%, hip hop and R&B. Now we, we cut the data one other way. We wanted to look at music consumption. We asked the people how they were using music, and then we looked at, um, at the tastes of various consumption groups. And again, a very similar theme is going to appear um, in that uh, country and hip-hop and R&B will look very different depending on your consumption patterns. So for starters, we looked at daily streamers, and we're going to compare that to daily radio users. So among daily streamers, of course, the pop is there. But there's a very high percentage of hip-hop and R&B in the top 100 among daily streamers and very little country. On the other hand, when we look at daily radio users, we see more country, 23%, and somewhat less hip-hop and R&B. So as Warren said when we got started, when you're making music decisions, you're seeing a lot of information. When you see streaming data, when you see streaming uh, rankers, don't be surprised when you see a lot of hip hop and, and R&B on that ranker. Um, but uh, you got to do some more thinking uh, when you decide whether that belongs on the radio. This is where you may see differences in your own research as compared to that streaming ranker. Similarly, we, we looked at the top 100 among heavy music purchasers and then light music purchasers. And we see some differences here too. Here's the, here's the heavy music purchasers. Of course, pop is the, is, uh, is the central theme, but there's a good level of hip hop and R&B, 29% of their top 100, and very little, 5% country, uh, within the top 100 of heavy music purchasers. On the other hand, when we bring in, in red, the light music purchasers, we see more country, 25% of their top 100, and less hip hop, 15 and R&B, 15% of their top, uh, their top 100. And what does that tell us? It says when we look at sales data when we're making music decisions, don't be surprised when you see a lot of hip hop and R&B in the top of that ranker, and it may not look the same as your own music research as you're making those music decisions, and now you know why. All right, so we've looked at some song rankers by genre, but I haven't yet given you the big picture of the top titles overall among 1,000 participants. So let's get to it. What's the number one song in the study? Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars. A few years old, but the most popular title, uh, contemporary title of all those tested. Let me show you the top 10. No surprise to see there's going to be a lot of pop in here based on everything else we've shown you. Uh, Believer, Imagine Dragons, Shape of You, another Ed Sheeran song, Thinking Out Loud. There's Nothing Holding Me Back, Africa, Scars to Your Beautiful, Havana, 24 Karat Magic, and The Middle. Top 10, again, in this really mass appeal look at music taste, at contemporary music appeal. All right. It wouldn't be a music test if we also didn't go down to the other end. What are, what's the stinker of the study? Uh, not my opinion. This is, you know, this is, you can, you can blame this on all the, uh, the, the United States and Canadian citizens. The bottom song in this study, Gucci Gang. I know, you're just as surprised as I was. Um, this song also has the distinction, by the way, of being the most burned song uh, among those tested. Um, so one final little fun thing, uh, this guy. So uh, no, we didn't test any songs by Donald Trump, nor did we get Donald Trump to participate in the study. But we asked about him. And we asked people if they have a kind of a, somewhere on the scale of a positive to negative impression of President Donald Trump. And wouldn't it be interesting to see if there are music differences between those two different groups? So let's see. Those who have a negative opinion 
of Trump. This is their top tier. And those who have a positive opinion, uh, this is their top tier. Big time differences. More than anything else we've shown you today, a lot of country among Trump supporters, a lot of hip hop and R&B among Trump detractors. Uh, so what's number one with Trump supporters? What's number one with Trump detractors? Well, there's reason for hope and optimism because it's the same song. The great unifier of the contemporary music super study is Uptown Funk. Well, we'd like to end on a high note, so that was a, a little bit fun. Um, thanks for coming out this morning. We hope this gave you a good picture of the state of music taste when it comes to contemporary music in the U.S. and Canada. So we appreciate your attendance, and thank you very much.